I chose you from the world, that you may go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus departed to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. When they came, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And he came down with them and stood on a stretch of level ground. A great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And even those who were tormented by unclean spirits were cured. Everyone in the crowd sought to touch him because power came forth from him and he healed them all. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please all be seated. Today's Gospel passage presents to us how the Lord took time away from the people. He took the necessary break away from the crowd. Not that the Lord was actually finding it to be difficult already serving men, but simply because the Lord wanted to instruct as well his disciples in this regard. There is something in the gospel, in the gesture of Jesus, that is very instructive when he went away in order to pray. According to St. Luke, Jesus departed to the mountain to pray. As we all know, the mountain is a special locus in the scriptures where it is designated as a place of prayer. That every time man goes up the mountain, it is actually God that descends from heaven and meets man on the top of the mountain. So that is very symbolic of what happens in prayer. Man climbs the mountain, man petitions the Lord, and here is God hearing whatever is the petition of man. But notice the following phrase given to us by St. Luke. The Lord spent the night in prayer to God. That is actually noteworthy and remarkable. The Lord spent the night in prayer. Which means the Lord could do away without sleep. The Lord could do away without food, but he could not do away without prayer. The night was spent in prayer. He could have forgone a good night's sleep. He could have forgone a sumptuous meal after healing men, after performing miracles, after preaching the gospel. But notice, he wanted to remain intact in his prayer life. He did not want his prayer to disintegrate because he was overwhelmed by a lot of activities or because he was drained already by a lot of programs and demands coming from the people. The Lord spent the night in prayer. 
what does prayer do in our life? What does actually, what does actually prayer do in the life of Jesus? Every time we pray, we have the opportunity to make our will always in accordance with the will of God. Every time we engage ourselves into prayer, our will becomes in congruence with the will of God. It is important that even if Jesus was already doing a lot of things for the people, he wanted to remain aligned in his will with the will of the Father. Because the will of the Father is the reason why he came down on earth in order to save man. Therefore, that is also the kind of importance we have to place in prayer. That every time we pray, it is our earnest desire that our will may conform to the will of God. That we walk with God hand in hand in respect to our will. Why? Why is it important that our will is in congruence with the will of God? Because any tension in the life of man any conflict in the life of man, any frustration in the life of man, any worry or uncertainty that we experience each day is actually a tension between following my will or following the will of God. Obeying my will or disobeying the will of God. Doing my own thing and resisting the will of God. Sometimes, when there is tension going on in our life, it actually speaks of how we are opposing the will of God to happen in our life. That is a good barometer that we can use, especially in determining what kind of life I am following is it my life in accordance with the will of God? Or is it my life purely in accordance to my own will? Because if there is any tension going on inside of us, it must be because we are resisting most of the times the will of God to happen in us. That is why also, every time we pray, we sharpen our focus to find out whether what I'm still doing is the will of God or no longer the will of God. When we engage ourselves into prayer, then it strengthens our capacity to perceive God in all situations of our life. Whether I am in a workplace, whether I go to the market, whether I go to the school, whether I go to the church, whether I go for a movie, I can always perceive if it is the will of God that I am following or not. If it is the will of God that I am opposing or dutifully carrying out. My dear friends, it is important that we engage into prayer each day. And in the terms of St. Luke, the Lord is spent it all night long. Why? because the Lord wanted to remain focused that His will is always in accordance with the will of the Father. Today, we are celebrating also the most holy name of Our Lady, and it is but fitting that we take also the example of Our Lady, how she faithfully followed the will of God. When the angel Gabriel appeared to her, there was nothing that Mary resisted in the message of the angel of the Lord, everything she followed. Why? Because she trusted that the will of God is always the finest and the best for her. My dear friends, we ask the intercession of Our Lady that we may always heed the will of God, that whatever God wants, let it happen in our life. Because if it is the will of God, it is the best and the finest.
Amen.